Welcome to my Ninja Turtles channel. It's Saturday morning, it's noon, it's time for turtles. It's gonna be a great show. Today, we are talking about Secret of the Ooze parody from Mad Magazine. 1991 movie was, 1991 movie was parody by Mad Magazine. Great comedy magazine. So buckle up, it's gonna be a great show. Before we get started, just wanted to let you know to like and subscribe to my Ninja Turtles channel, follow along, turn on notifications. I live stream every Tuesday and every Saturday about a bunch of Ninja Turtles stuff, toys, cartoons, movies, video games, and more. So make sure to like and subscribe and we'll get started. Secret of the Ooze, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 was the second live action movie from the Ninja Turtles back in the 90s. Great movie as well. Featured Toka and Razor and had a lighter tone than the first movie. It's a little bit different, a little bit lighter, a little bit more like the 87 cartoon series than the first movie. It was a little less dark. No Bebop and Rocksteady, but we got Toka and Razor. It was a great movie. It still had the Henson suits and a lot of other good things going for it. Professor Jordan Perry. And it was a really, really wonderful movie. So, needless to say, I love the movie, I love the Ninja Turtles. And I was very happy to see that Mad Magazine did a parody, a movie parody, of the Secret of the Ooze movie, the 1991 Turtles movie. So I definitely read it, and I want to share it with you. And if you don't know about Mad Magazine, it's a comedy magazine. It's a humor, satire, parody magazine. I'm not really sure what the difference is between all those, but they do it all and they do it well. It's been around since the 50s. They've had hundreds of issues and it's a very influential magazine. They've influenced everything from <clears throat> The Onion, Babylon Bee, Saturday Night Live, National Lampoon, Cracked Magazine. And it's influenced everyone from Howard Stern, Jerry Seinfeld, Gilbert Gottfried. Pretty much everything in modern comedy has been influenced by Mad Magazine. Mad Magazine does movie parodies. They do fake advertisements. They pretty much ridicule and mock everything in modern society. So I love it. And Turtle Mania was huge at the time. So it was pretty, it was a pretty ripe target for Mad Magazine to make fun of. Pretty ripe target. Turtle Mania was so big, you had to make fun of it at the time. And all the people that worked for Mad Magazine, you know, they're middle-aged. They're in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. And it's a kid's program, so of course they have to make fun of it. And uh, the Secret of the Ooze parody was featured in October of 1991. But it wasn't the first time they talked about the Turtles, of course. Turtle Media was already in full swing at this point in 1991. And the first time I think they mentioned them, the Turtles, was in December 89. The December 89 issue. They had the special Mutant Turtle issue where they gave the Turtles the cover. And you can see the Ninja Turtle there on the cover is modeled after Alfred E. Newman, the Mad Magazine mascot with the red bandana. And they gave him the back cover as well, where they had Mad's gallery of lesser known Ninja Turtles. Where they made fun of a bunch of classic works of art in a Ninja Turtle style. They put a bandana on the Mona Lisa. They put a bandana on Vincent Van Gogh's self-portrait and made an, uh, like an Andy Warhol style portrait with all the Ninja Turtles. So it's really great that they've done all this stuff. And uh, in addition to giving them the Mad Magazine cover and back cover, they've also done a fold-in. Are you familiar with fold-ins? This is um, kind of a parody of the center fold. Old magazines like National Geographic and Playboy used to have fold-outs in the center where you could unfold a multi-panel piece of paper, a page of paper to give like a more panoramic shot other than just a typical magazine size page. So instead of folding out, Mad Magazine was quirky and weird. They decided to fold in. And you can see in the upper left hand corner, there's a question. That's kind of the setup to the joke. Then there's a picture and a caption below it, which is the punchline essentially. So the question here in the upper left is what kind of plague has today's parents feeling shell shocked? And you can see all the parents in the center in the picture. They're all sick. They're laying on the ground. They don't look good. And the caption says nine out of 10 parents afflicted by this plague. Judging from some of the comments, 
feel a turn for the better isn't in sight. It will startle many others as it becomes a major story in the media. But when you fold it in, the caption changes and the picture changes to reveal the punchline to the joke. So what kind of plague has today's parents feeling shell-shocked? Ninja Turtle Mania. And the picture turns into a Ninja Turtle. So how clever is that? How funny is that? It's amazing. So it's just a wonderful little gag. It's a wonderful joke. Mad Magazine is so clever. They're so funny. And um, most of these fold-ins were created by Al Jaffe. Al Jaffe is an artist and a writer. This is Al Jaffe. <clears throat> and he worked for Mad Magazine for like 60 or 70 years, something like that, 75 years. Al Jaffe is currently 101 years old. He's 101 and a half. So he is an old guy and he had a long career. I think he's one of the most prolific comic book uh, writer, uh, artists and writers ever. Written on hundreds of Mad Magazines and hundreds of books and other things. Very in influential guy. And imagine a career that lasts from the, you know, the 50s to the to 2020 or something like that. Imagine working 70 years drawing goofy little comics. So let's give a tea in the chat. I haven't even said hello to the chat yet today. Let's get some teas in the chat for Al Jaffe. What an, he's a hero. He's a national hero. He's a world hero. Let's get some teas in the chat. I even have a new tea design with a little Casey Jones tea. How nice is that? So let's get some teas in the chat for Al Jaffe. Tea for turtles to celebrate people like Al Jaffe contributing to the turtles world. What a good guy. Hope everyone in the chat is doing well. Good morning and happy Saturday to all of you. So Al Jaffe did the fold in. Mad Magazine has featured the Ninja Turtles before. And I've actually covered it before in a couple videos. I did this video featuring that first magazine in the fold and called Early Ninja Turtles Content in Mad Magazine. So I did a scripted video for that and great video. I recommend you check it out after the live stream. And I also did a second video about Mad Magazine and the Ninja Turtles already. And that video covered the 1990 movie, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You can see Alfred E. Newman there in the thumbnail. Mad Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So. They recently re-released this original parody from 1990, and they colorized it, actually. Mad Magazines were printed originally in black and white, just like the Ninja Turtles. You can see the art here looks great. Written by Dick DiBartolo, artist is Sam Viviano. All the good ones end in O. And the art looks wonderful in color, and it looked wonderful in black and white as well. When I did my scripted video about it, I reviewed the black and white original version. April O'Neil, Pennington, Charles Pennington looks great. The Turtles, Danny. So check that out when you get a chance. That was in the 1990 movie parody by Mad Magazine. But today, today we're not talking about the 1990 movie. Today we're talking about the 1991 sequel. The live action sequel. Came out in March of 1991. And this magazine came out uh, around six months after that. Le less than six months actually. The cover date is October 91, and I think they put them out a couple months before that. So headline there, it says, In this issue, we mock Ninja Turtles, melt vanilla ice, and slander Dan Quayle. Came out issue number 306 for the price of 175. What a good price, huh? These magazines were chocked full of content. Every page. They didn't even have advertisements in the magazine. So let's check it out. Let's take a look. Whoops, let me stop that for a second. You can just see how great the artwork is here. I think it's a painting. This was all before computers really were involved. And like I said, the guys that were working for this magazine, they started working in the 50s. So even if computers were around in 1991, they weren't using them. So the artwork looks great. It's a painting, it's wonderful. And Splinter is presented as Alfred E. Newman there, the Mad Magazine mascot, the kid with the buck teeth and the goofy look on his face. And instead of TGRI, they have ech. And uh, the turtles look funny. The turtles look great. They're disgusted. I think Donatello's sick over there. And they're sickened by Master Splinter Alfred E. Newman pouring the ooze out into the sewer. Really funny stuff. Really funny magazine, like I said. Great stuff in this magazine. And the parody really starts right off. It's a five or six page parody in the Cowabunglers department. And the whole parody is narrated by Vanilla Ice. They refer to him as Vanilla Lice. A lot of puns, a lot of wordplay, a lot of goofy stuff in Mad Magazine. 
They really don't hold back on anyone. This is a time where comedy was free. You could make fun of anyone and anything. And they did it with impunity. Comedy was allowed back then. Nowadays, it seems like comedy is a little bit... Um, comedy isn't what it used to be. Comedy is almost illegal now. There's some groups you can't make fun of, some people, some things you just can't make fun of anymore. But Mad Magazine did whatever the shell they wanted. So they start off with Vanilla Lice. And he raps as the narrator. He says, welcome to my ice capade in this turtle soup charade. Their first flick sucked, you may recall. If you've seen one turtle, you've seen them all. So how funny is that? He starts right off. First line, first little paragraph. He's doing the ninja rap and he says the first film sucked. So they're not pulling any punches. They're getting right to it. And the artwork looks great. Like I said, it's black and white, but it's wonderful. The turtles look like they did in the Secret of the Ooze movie. They look different than they did in the 1990 movie and it captures that. Really talented artist. Did it all by hand too. No edit undo when you're drawn with ink, when you're drawn with pen and paper. No edit undo. And the turtles start right off too. So why do we have vanilla lice in our movie? We wanted something in this film that we had that we didn't have in our last one. Rap music? No. Entertainment. That may be expecting too much of him. We'll be lucky if vanilla lice will still be famous by the end of our little movie. So right off the bat, they're making fun of the first movie, saying it wasn't entertaining. They're making fun of rap music, Vanilla Ice, his short-lived career. And then we have Kino on the right side of the page, and it really looks just like Kino. I'm just a pizza delivery boy, but as you can see, I studied martial arts. And the guy he's beating up says, that's obvious, and it shows that you didn't study acting. So right off the bat, they're making fun of Kino's acting skills. And of course, Kino wasn't a, uh, you know, classically trained actor. Kino worked as the stunt performer for Donatello on the first 1990 movie, and they liked him so much, and he was so charismatic that they brought him back to be an on-screen talent. They brought him back to be a character with his face showing, not wearing a mask. So like I said, Mad Magazine pulls no punches. They're making fun of the Ninja Turtles. They're not holding anything back. And as you continue to scroll down the first page, you can see Tatsu, Shredder, and April O'Neil. Of course, they all have funny names. They refer to April O'Neil as Gapewell O Wow and Shredder is Dredder. But the artwork looks great. They really capture how these people look. You can tell that it's Paige Turco and not Judith Hogue as April O'Neil on the far right side of the screen. And Tatsu looks as angry and uh, belligerent as ever. Shredder's costume looks awesome. And it's all done in black and white. So what a great first page. The parody starts right off, it starts hot. They're not holding anything back, they're coming out of the gate hot. And finally, we get the title card. Teen Rage Moolah Nitwit Turtles 2, The Secret is to Snooze. And uh, artist Mort Drucker. This was a great Mad Magazine artist. He drew probably thousands of things for the magazine, hundreds of these movie parodies. And I think he worked for Mad Magazine for like 50, 60, 70 years. A lot of these guys had very long careers. Some of the longest careers ever in comic book. Um, and drawing and comedy and parody and writing and artistry. These guys are wonderful artists. And the writer is Dick DiBartolo, just like the first magazine parody. Written by Dick DiBartolo again. He, he wrote hundreds of these things. He's a very popular guy, still around today. And he also had a 50, 60 year career with Mad Magazine. And there's so many jokes you can see on the upper right hand side of the screen that there's a little doodle. These were called mar in the marginals. So they would even add little uh, wordless comics in the margins. So they filled up every little bit of space in a Mad Magazine with little jokes, little comics, and little things for kids to enjoy. It was directed for kids. I think the magazine was meant for kids. Or immature people, I guess I, you, you could say. I, um, I think the people that wrote the magazine liked it too, and they're, they were in their 50s, 60s. Maybe it's just immature, young at heart people, I guess you could say. So the magazine starts right off and it, it really, um, the magazine does a great job of hitting every single beat of the movie. They introduce April, they introduce all the characters, but they don't just tell the story, they add a joke in every panel, multiple jokes in every panel. So I read on those first few lines on that first page, they make fun of a bunch of stuff. And um, on this page, they make fun of a bunch of stuff as well. They make fun of how bad the first movie was. They make fun of, um, you know, all, just how silly the Ninja Turtles are, if you really think about it. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's a little bit crazy. So it's funny to see how well these things are mocked and how well they're made fun of. There's a lot of stuff to make fun of. And Splinter and April are talking about living in the sewer. And 
The turtles say, we must go back to the sewer because that's where we started life. Another turtle says, it's also where we find stuff like the script for this movie. So they're making fun of the second movie too. They just, uh, they mock everything. Nothing is good enough for the people at Mad Magazine, I guess. The crew at Mad Magazine even refers to themselves as the usual gang of idiots. So they even make fun of themselves. They say they're talentless and they're idiots. It's great. Pretty loose guys. So the other thing they have here is um, a lot of gizmos and gadgets drawn in the, in the magazine parody. And it's amazing how these people can just draw anything. Not only can they draw caricatures of the turtles, but they can draw environments and they can draw props and Shredder's helmet. And it all looks great. These guys are really talented artists. It's amazing that some of our most current talented artists um, they work in commercial fields. They're not just um, like Monet anymore. It's not just um, painting the Sistine Chapel. They're guys who work a daily job, nine to five, and they're producing art nine to five, Monday through Friday for money. No one's doing this stuff for free. Let me check in with the chat real fast. We've got Jackson McDaniel, Gen X, remembers the first movie, JR, Ninja Rap. Fun fact, Mad Magazine was created by EC Comics. Yes, Mad Magazine started out as a comic book. And to avoid censorship, they turned into a magazine. Comic books had increased censorship and they wanted to be free, so they turned into a magazine. And on the next page, oops, sorry, if you continue this page, excuse me, you can see Vanilla Lice is still narrating. He says, Weight Watcher Waste may decrease in time, while Waste Watcher's weight will increase with slime. And they introduce Professor Jordan Perry, and the scene where they find all the toxic dump, where they find the giant sunflower in the movie, and April O'Neil is interviewing Professor Jordan Perry. They hit all the beats of the movie and add jokes along the way. So I think it takes a great amount of skill and talent to be able to tell a story while making fun of the story you're telling, paying a tribute to the comics, making fun of them. They're spinning a lot of plates here and it's really amazing how they do that. So, even Jordan Perry looks good. Jordan Perry looks funny. They're doing a great job. They're making fun of everything, evenly. They're doing, um... They're doing a lot of work. And as the plot continues here... Vanilla Ice makes fun of the security at the lab where they sneak in and steal the ooze. Don't secret research labs have tight security? For the lab in this flick, you don't even need a key. And they talk about the ooze, and Professor Jordan Perry says this cylinder holds an unknown mix of chemical toxins that were exposed to atomic waves. It produced a fluffy gook uh, with dangerous mutagenic properties, and the turtles ask, what's it used for? Professor Jordan Perry replies, mostly for the filling in Twinkies. So they're even making fun of Twinkies. They're making fun of everything. Shredder refers to Professor Jordan Perry as Beaker Breath, and the turtles steal the mutagen just like they do in the movie. So it's great to see this movie mocked on all levels. The plot is mocked, the characters are mocked. And you can even see that um, the foot soldiers are mocked. They're compared to stormtroopers here. You can see the stormtroopers and Foot Clan, they're intermixed in the upper left hand corner. And uh, Shredder says, may the force be with you. Tatsu advises him that you've already stolen Darth Vader's voice and costume from Star Wars. At least let them keep their force be with you phrase. And Shredder says, you're right. I'll be more original. Come on, punk, make my day. So they even make fun of the derivative aspect of Mad Magazine. It's pretty great that they make fun of um, how Turtles was started as a parody. And um, I think even... Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman were influenced by Mad Magazine. We all know the first comic from Mirage Studios, the original Ninja Turtles comic back in 1984, was a parody on some levels. It was a parody of Ronin, the comic book Ronin. It was a parody of Daredevil, the comic book. It was a parody of all these anthropomorphic comics that were funny in the 80s and popular in the 80s. So I think Mad Magazine's influence spread far and wide, even to Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman, the co-creators of the Ninja Turtles. And you can see Master Splinter and the Turtles convincing Kino to join the Foot Clan as a secret spy, as an infiltrator of the Foot Clan. And the guy in the Foot Clan says, for this test, you will have, you'll have to fight eight guys coming at you with guns and knives. And they ask, what kind of test is this? And someone replies, I think it's the test to get into a public junior high school. Implying that um, 
public junior high schools are a little rough in the city, a little bit of violence sometimes in public high schools due to some bad apples at some of these schools. And they have the scene where Kino steals the bells off the turtles and it looks great. It's amazing how they can draw this stuff. And I, I don't think the movie was out on tape yet. They had tape, of course, you couldn't stream the movie. You couldn't Google the movie. There weren't any clips on YouTube or whatever. So I think these guys just saw the movie a few times, took some notes, maybe took some sketches in the theater. Maybe they took some illegal discreet photographs and they recreated everything. They recreated everything from the turtles costumes to their looks to Shredder's helmet to their subway lair. And you could see even a payphone in the back. There were payphones in 1991 and even the payphone looks good. These guys could draw everything. It's amazing. They can just they can draw a turtle, they can draw a subway station, they can draw a trash can or a they can make Kino recognizable and they can draw a payphone. So it's really cool. Really talented artists, really talented writers to include jokes in every panel, making fun of everything. It's tough to come up with constant jokes and be just constantly funny like that while still telling the story of the second Ninja Turtles movie, Secret of the Ooze. And of course, the climactic scene in the movie, Toka and Razor on the right-hand side of the screen, and they look like Toka and Razor. It's amazing how they can draw something to look just like a picture. It's like a perfect caricature. And like I said, I think they did it from memory. They did it from just seeing the movie a few times in theaters. The movie wasn't even out on VHS, wasn't out on DVD. And you could see Vanilla Lice there in the upper right-hand corner. Two new beasts were devised on business advice. New characters add up to more merchandise. So they're making fun of the capitalist uh, nature of Ninja Turtles, selling toys, selling merchandise, selling tickets, getting t kids' parents to buy things. And they do a great job at it. Climactic scene in the movie. Turtles fight Toka and Razor. They fight Shredder. Shredder becomes Super Shredder to make four mirthless turtles the stars of a flick. Just teach them the old Three Stooges shtick. A lot of Yiddish in Mad Magazine. And they make fun of the fact that the turtles, there's a lot of slapstick, there's a lot of physical comedy. And it is for kids. It's a goofy movie. They hardly use their weapons. Much lighter, much less dark than the first movie. And you see here they invite Professor Jordan Perry to their lair. They all get ready to fight. They end up taking out Super Shredder under the dock. And Vanilla Lice wraps it up. Which all goes to prove that to have a big hit, having zero for talent doesn't matter one bit. Oof. A burn from Vanilla Lice. What a great mag Mad Magazine movie parody, huh? The Secret of the Ooze movie was great back in 1991. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze, was a great sequel to the original 1990 movie, which was the most successful independent movie at the time. It was the biggest selling, most popular movie ever at the time. So The Secret of the Ooze was a big sequel. It was a big follow-up. I think it made, you know, $100 million, which was huge back in the day. It made a lot of money, not as much as the first, not as big of a profit as the first. They spent a little bit more money on the second movie as well. But I think it really holds up. And I think it's a great movie. And I think it's something to be respected. A lot of people look at this stuff, it's goofy, it's pop culture, it's nostalgia, it's throwaway. It's uh, member berries. Member the Ninja Turtles? Oh, oh, member the Ninja Turtles? Oh, I love the Ninja Turtles. Remember them? Wow, I miss them. But I think it's more than that. I think it's more than just member berries. On one aspect, on one level, it is just empty, you know, popcorn flick nostalgia. But on the other hand, these magazines are art history. They're, in, in a sense, they're a work of modern art. This is the pinnacle of modern art, modern comedy. This was the best that people could do. And magazines, stuff like this, it's timeless. They make fun of everything. They make fun of everything. They don't hold any punches, like I've said. They don't hold anything back. And it what's, it's kind of what makes magazines like this timeless. It what, it's what makes comedy funny. It, it's what makes it resonate today. A lot of these jokes are very funny. They hold up very well. And it's not just, this now, not just, not just nostalgia, excuse me. It's not just empty pop culture. It's not just empty calories. It's art history. This is like sociology. This is anthropology. This is human history. 
So I think it's something to be respected, something to be enjoyed, something to be shared with friends. And I'm very happy that they decided to make fun of the Ninja Turtles so many times. It's an honor to be made fun of Mad Magazine. It's like having a song parodied by Weird Al Yankovic. It's, um, it'd be bad if they didn't make fun of you. It's like having Don Rickles roast you, a, a popular roast comic, Jeff Ross roast you or something like that. It's an honor to be made fun of by these people. These are the best people at making fun of other things. They've influenced everyone, like I've said, The Tonight Show, uh, Daily Show, any ma modern comedy, um, any all sorts of modern comedy, modern comedians, meme culture, drawing little comics, comic strips, Dilbert. These have all been affected by Mad Magazine, so I was very happy to read this parody. And I'm happy that you all join me. This is a pretty good stream. I want you to let want to let you know I stream every Tuesday and Saturday. Tuesday evenings and Saturday mornings, it's time for Turtles and the Ninja Turtles show. So make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Feel free to leave a chat and a comment. I want to hear from you guys. And um, I guess at this point in the show, I guess there's only one thing left to say. Cow! Cow! Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment and share this video. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more Ninja Turtles videos like this.